MACs or MIs. But we won't address those at, the, at this time. Next, we will look at the different leads that help create an EKG by recording voltages and direction of that voltage in the heart. The first thing to look at is the limb leads. The limb leads are essential for an EKG. They help us understand the main direction of depolarization in the heart. And they tell us a whole host of information that we need to know in diagnosing heart pathology. We'll start with leads 1, 2, and 3. Limb leads 1, 2, and 3 have negative and positive directions. Limb lead 1 is negative towards the right arm and positive towards the left arm. Limb lead 2 is negative towards the right arm and positive towards the left leg. Limb lead 3 is negative towards the left arm and positive towards the left leg. This is important because it helps show which way depolarizations are going. For example, if you have a depolarization going toward a positive area of a lead, that deflection will be upward or positive on the EKG. So based on how we see deflections in each of these leads, we can determine how the heart and in what direction it is being depolarized. The next set of leads that are still in leads are called AVR, AVL, and AVF. AV stands for augment, augmented voltage. AVR is kind of a lead that checks any voltages heading towards the right side of the patient. So it's positive towards the right and negative towards the left. AVL is checks any voltage that's going towards the left side of the patient. So it's positive towards the left and negative towards the right. AVF looks at voltages going towards the feet of the patient and it is positive towards the patient's foot and negative towards the patient's head. So any positive deflection going towards the patient's foot in AVF will appear as a positive deflection. Next we'll look at precordial leads. Precordial leads are your leads V1 through V6 and they don't tell axis of depolarization but can give us a picture about how large the ventricles are. Um, and we'll go into further detail how to use these precordial leads in future videos. But the displacement of them is very important. Leads V1 and V2 are in the fourth intercostal space to both the left and right side of the sternum. V3, V4 are just below that. And V4 is located at the fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. Then V5 and V6 wrap around to both the sides and towards the back of the patient. When you use the precordial leads, or sorry, when you use the limb leads, you form an array. And this array can tell you the exact depolarization of the heart. You can't use precordial leads because they only can see the depolarization in the anterior versus posterior axis. If we want to see if it's depolarizing towards the left right ventricle, we have to use limb leads. So this is the basic array of how leads take a picture of the depolarization and voltage within the heart. We'll go into more detail into the next video about how to use this array to determine the direction of depolarization. But just keep this in mind for now. Next, we'll try to understand the basic concepts behind an EKG and how to read the basic waveforms. So let's go down to a grid you'll see in the EKG. So an EKG is made of big boxes and little boxes. Each little box is one millimeter in both width and height. So these are squares. The reference for any EKG will begin just before the EKG starts recording and will appear 10, bo 10 little boxes high or 10 millimeters in height and that acts as a reference. 
Next, so each little box is one millimeter in width and one millimeter in height. Each, each one millimeter in width is equal to 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. Each one millimeter in height is equal to one millivolt. Each large box consists of five small boxes and thus is 200 milliseconds in length. Again, length is measured in milliseconds or seconds, and height is measured in millivolts. Very key in understanding EKGs to, to, to know how big these boxes are and what they represent. Now, every 15 boxes represents a three second interval. So little box represents 0.04 seconds, big box represents 0.04 two seconds and 15 large boxes is three seconds. Now let's come down to our final concept is basic waves in EKG. First you have P wave, Q wave, R wave, S wave, and T wave. These are basic waves in EKG. Remember, every positive deflection is a depolarization towards a positive portion of a lead. In this case, we will dissect each of these waves so we know what they mean. So let's start off with the P wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. So the SA node fires, it causes the atrial muscles to contract. That depolarization is represented by the P wave. As this travels down, this depolarization, it passes the AV node, goes to the ventricles, and creates the QRS complex, which consists of the Q wave, which is the first negative deflection, the R wave, the first positive deflection, and the S wave is the first negative deflection after the R wave. So QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization or depolarization of both the right and left ventricles. During the same time the atria are repolarizing so actually that wave is buried within the QRS complex. The next important wave to note is the T wave. The T wave is a positive deflection because it represents repolarization of the ventricles. So, within this short span of an EKG, we see a P wave, which is atrial depolarization, a QRS complex, which is ventricular depolarization, and a T wave, which is ventricular repolarization. All are very key to understanding of EKG. We went over the basic heart anatomy and circulation, the limb leads and precordial leads, how to read the boxes on EKG, and the basic deflections or waves, such as the P wave on an EKG. So to give you some basic understanding, look to the next video to understand how to determine QRS axis in the EKG. If you like this video, give it a like, put some comments down below, even any subjects you want me to cover, and I'll definitely try to cover them, and subscribe. Reach from homework made simple. See you around.